All right, gentlemen, we are back. Feel free to start your meeting. All right, let's say we're uh, call to order is happening now. Sounds like 906. One second, Jenna, sorry. We're gonna let Jared start the meeting because you guys are gonna do your chair elect. Yes, <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Um, so this is the November 8th uh, Heritage Resources Committee meeting. And uh, because it is the first meeting uh, since the organizational meeting um, by council in which all of the members of the HRC um, were assigned to this, this committee, we do need to uh, nominate a chair amongst the members. And so um, I guess I'll hand it over to uh, whoever would like to um, make nominations and then I suppose we'll have to vote on, on those nominations. So. Well, thank you, Jared. I'd, I'd like to nominate Dennis as chair. And as I said, uh, uh, nominations I mean, <laughs> well, that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll second the, the motion too, so let's put it that way. So. Okay. Any other any other nominations? Okay. So, um, do we, Leslie, do we only need one one seconding motion, or do we need a vote? I think that'll be fine. Okay. So, Dennis, congratulations! Uh, you're chair of the HRC. <laughs> Congratulations or condolences. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we can get started then, eh? Yes. Cool. Okay, uh, so um, in approving the agenda, just before we approve the agenda, um, I know that in our last meeting, we talked about going through the tracking form today. And uh, just uh, when we get there, we'll just see how our time is going. And uh, we've got business arising, but we will get to that. So can we have somebody uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, vote to uh, approve the agenda, please? Mr. Chairman, uh, so before we Mr. do that, I have an addition. I have an I have an addition to the agenda. Shoot. Uh, and it's the the uh, discussion about the addition of public members. We have two openings available. Okay, we'll mark that under new business, Paul. Item F. Okay. With that amendment, um, I'm assuming Rick is still ready to uh, close that the agenda to be approved. Yes, move to approve the agenda. Any um, any other votes? Okay, we'll. Um, or rather proposals. Okay, let's say the agenda is approved. Now for approval of the minutes. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I'll make that I, I, uh, I move to approve the minutes as circulated. Any other discussion? All right, so our um, our minutes are approved. Thank you very much. So we're now on to item D, business arising. And the uh, first item, uh, which is the most significant item is uh, the heritage calendar and I want to thank Jared very much for organizing with wh whichever colleagues he used which might have been Leslie or whoever to get all the materials that we've done 
nicely tidied up and put in the agenda in a manner that we can get through that very quickly. I noticed that we have um, 10 uh, out of the 13 um, photographs that we're going to use in the calendar, or that we wish to use in the calendar, 10 out of 13 have a, uh, an adequate and workable um, caption. And so there are three that we are missing a caption on, and that's, I think, I uh, want to get Jared to speak about the publication issues, and, and then uh, assuming that we're still alive, we can come back and see how we can finish those last three um, captions. So, Jared, over to you. Yes, and so, as you mentioned, Dennis, um, we do have some publication issues that we haven't resolved yet. So, basically, the, the issue is, is that we had access to the pictures which we selected, um, and Katie had um, gathered those pictures uh, just via screenshots from the Glenbow Museum archives um, back in back in the summer, and then we had distributed them amongst the members, and we had made our selection process, as you know, and, and drafted the captions. When I went back to the Glenbow Glen, Glen excuse me Museum and contacted them to purchase those photographs, they are their organization is now completely shut down because they're undertaking a renovation downtown. And <laughs> I have, so far, I mean, there are some uh, emails that are on the website. Um, there's, a, there's an account, accountant and um, a controller person with the position of controller um, contact on their website that I've called and left messages as well as emailed in order to make a, you know, we tell them which 13 photos we would like to purchase for the purposes of publishing them for this calendar. And they haven't responded yet. So I, <laughs> I'm going to continue to make those attempts um, in order to gain access uh, to the copyrighted versions of these photos. Um, but I, I, at this point, I'm, I'm a bit at a loss as far as how to gain access to them in order to, for publication. Yeah, that that can be a problem. I know I just had a an issue like that uh, personally on something that I was producing, and I had a quote from another a document, and I sought approval, and. Um, and it, uh, nothing came back. And so what I did was I said in my document that approval had been sought. And I've got a funny feeling that um, if we said approval had been sought from the Glenbow, I mean, life has to go on. I, I'd be willing to take that chance, but perhaps the MD would not. Yeah, I mean, the challenge is, is so there it's, $25 a photograph, um, so which is not a huge cost. Um, we're totally willing and able to pay for that, for the 13 photographs. Um, but I've, I've spoken to the calendar, um, um, the, the print company, who would actually print the calendar. And unfortunately, the JPEGs that we have, they're, when you blow them up to calendar size, they're too pixelated. And yeah. so so they're not of a quality that you would want to publish. So I, I think it is necessary um, in, to, <laughs> to get the originals um, because, you know, obviously these photographs are fairly old and they're not great quality in the first place. They're, they're not, they're, they're pretty good, I think, but they're not great. And so you don't want them any more pixelated than they already are. Um, so I think it is important to get the originals and, and to go through that process. but. Unfortunately, it's the timing there that the whole, I was, I was downtown Calgary this weekend and yeah, I walked by the Glenbow Museum and the whole thing is under construction. It's all shut down. <laughs> so um, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Hopefully we can overcome it, but I do need to get in contact with them over the next few days so we, that we have time to, to go to print. Okay. Well, Jared, thank you for that. What that tells me is that we should get captions for the remaining three pictures and you are successful. 
Uh, that, and if you're not successful, yes, uh, it'll I, be I, an I, easy I, time next year. I would sorry. like to bring bring up. I'm sorry about that. I'd like to bring up. There's some gross errors in some of the stuff that we got there too. A uh, caption that I made for the for one was on a totally different picture. A picture that they uh, had had uh, put put into it that we wanted to have in it, which was about a survey crew that was doing the dams, and it got put in as one of my wooden log captions, which is totally erroneous. So it's been uh, difficult, let's put it that way, when I'm going through it. Also about Prince and Kerr, there's some errors in that. I, I was married to a granddaughter of, of Prince, and as, as, as uh, Eric will probably remember, we met with the owner where the uh, the uh, John Ware's old cabin was uh, and moved from. And the Kerr's, uh, uh, what you call it, it was interesting, it was part of the history maybe people don't realize is the reason they started the PK Ranch was to get two young men that were fooling around in the red light district in Calgary out of town. And that was, they were put out there to have a ranch. It was no big ranch, let's put it that way. It was a fair size, but in that country, uh, part of their ranch was a, a dinosaur provincial park. Let's put it that way. So yes, that's interesting. They were partners in a ranch, but the main thing is Mr. Kerr was president of the, uh, Eau Claire Lumber Company. He hired Prince to do the millwright work, which was build the mill, which he built on his island in Calgary. And you got to realize for 30 years, all the lumber that was milled from them went down the river on and flo floats and uh, it floated to that island and was saw in there. Eh? So very influential and important part of our history because we supplied the lumber that came to there. Eh? But uh, like I say, uh, the captions, the stuff, I, some of them were, were not accurate. They're placed in the wrong place, let's put it that way. So, yeah, uh, Dwight, can you hang on for a second, Dwight? Uh, you kind of jumped ahead of me there uh, uh, because we're going we're gonna to look at them one by one as we pass by. And Excellent. we're going to sign off on them or otherwise. Uh, yes. Jared, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I, sorry. If, if we're going to go by go through them one by one we can comment yeah. on them as later on but sorry Dwight I I took the information that I received from all the members and I, I thought I compiled it properly um so I guess when we go through it one by one we can we can speak to that yes um, yes but I apologize for any errors that was in there I, I I thought I had just taken the information from each member and, and inserted it and I edited yeah. some of the language a little bit to make it a little no bit I realized that and you did a good job in a lot of them so um, but yeah, we can speak about it one by one. Okay. If you want to. Okay. Well, let's turn now because I want to come back. Uh, there's a couple of other items in there. Um, we've got the heritage calendar business arising. I just don't want to lose sight of the information that we got from uh, Dean Cooper uh, about uh, Dead Man's Flats. And I want to uh, just ask uh, Jared, what, how do we, how can we um, ensure that we have that in our records somewhere? Um, I haven't thought a lot about it yet. I've been busy trying to keep everything else together in the planning department. Um, I mean, I guess all of those records are in the original agenda for last meeting. Um, I know. Dean had provided some submissions. I can inquire about how to, I guess, store the hard copies um, at the MD office and get back to the, the committee regarding that particular um, action. Is that what the wishes of the committee would be or, or do you have any further direction? Well, I think that it's just that every once in a while as we go through our agendas, somebody uh, bursts into song and gives us some wonderful piece of information. Uh, for example, Dwight was just talking about being married to the, the granddaughter of Prince. Uh, I mean, th that things like that come up. 
and things like Dean stuff. And those are the pieces of information that I think um, we don't want them to just be chatted about or just be lost in a set of minutes. So you're going to about having some kind of record uh, in a way that we could extract these at future times. So if somebody was looking for something, they could go and uh, check it out and they might say, oh yes, here's some info on Dead Man's Flats. It's just that we've got these little nuggets, if you will, that come up from time to time in our meetings and would like to find a, a way to be confident that they they weren't just, uh, you know, uh, getting dust in the minutes where we couldn't find them, but rather that they were recorded somewhere where someone could press a button and boom out, it would come. And if that's really the point I wanted to make, and I'm sure that EMD can do that because you just essentially referred to that. Well, as an idea, I haven't, I haven't, I don't understand the actual functioning of, of what I said, but I can inquire to see if that's possible. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so that that answers that question. And again, before we go into the photographs, uh, well, we can come back. I've, I've got a couple of other items, but we've got business arising, so we'll be able to come back to that. So if I could ask everybody to turn to their to the photographic record, which are in here. And the first one that starts is um, you know, it says at the top of the page, D, business arising. And um, I just think we need to go through these uh, one at a time and uh, either sign off on them or uh, make a plan to amend them in the case of what Dwight was talking about, or make a plan to either find a caption or else change the photograph. And in this case, on that page the first one is the men sawing timber and the next one is colonel james walker sawmill and the, <laughs> our caption is missing there and um, um so we need to figure out either how we get a caption for it or go hunting for another picture are there any volunteers to come up with a caption for that one I'd I'm a little confused there because I know I sent in captions for the ones I had been requested to, but I don't see, like on the first one, the two-handed axe or saw, I put in a caption for that, and I don't know if it's been documented or not. So I don't know if, I mean, the email went through as far as I can tell, so. Dwight, I did Well, all right, Dwight, so what you're saying is, you're, you're just saying, Dwight, that you think there's something missing on the first one. Well, I had put in a caption for it, and as I did, and I explained it was a, a two-man sharp buck saw was the only way to buck at the time, one time to cut uh, logs at length. Eh? So strange, but uh, that's uh, basically all I was putting into there. So, so people well, just didn't uh, understand. Uh, Dwight, if you read the caption that's there, uh does that not cover the point you've just made uh i have to go through the earth so what does it say because i can't uh, find my all right here's here's what it says okay it's, it says before chainsaws the fastest way to cut logs to length was with yes. a sharp two-man buck saw yeah that's exactly the one i put in yes Okay, so we're fine then. That one we are. All right, let's move down the page. The next one is Colonel Walker Sawmill, and that, that has nothing beside it. Hmm. I have no idea on that one. Well, it wasn't necessarily yours. No, no I'm, by the, I'm saying I have no record of anything on that one either. So. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, is it critical we have a caption for every picture? I mean, what's wrong with just having a photo that says Colonel Walker's sawmill? Yeah. Fair enough. I agree. Yeah, well, it's it, it certainly uh, we could do that. So let's say in that case that the title on the photograph 
consider to be adequate. If we find something else to improve it, great. If not, we can go with that. So then that's two out of two that we are signing off on. And I'm turning the page uh, to the hauling logs and then Peter Prince and his buddy. So uh, is everybody happy with the hauling logs for James Richards Lumber Bill with the caption there? Dwight, do you want me to read it? Uh, no, I, that one I understand. Uh, I think, Eric, you had some concerns with that one? Uh, well, I, I did. I, I think this is accurate. Now, I talked to Doug Richards about it originally. The photo was, uh, when we first saw it, was identified as being 1922, if I recall correctly. And I talked to Doug, and he said, well, it couldn't have been because the mill burnt down uh, before that. Uh, but um, I, I think what we have is is fine. Uh, it was Doug's suggestion that he thought it was probably 1916. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Uh give the seal of approval on that one and go to the next one, Peter Prince and uh, Isaac Kendall Kerr. Yes, uh, that was one that I did have a concern on because what's not made clear in there, Kerr was the president of the Oak Hair Lumber Company and he actually hired a millwright from, Mon from Quebec by the name of uh, Prince uh, to be, to run the, saw the to establish and, and run the mill that's in Calgary on his island, Prince's Island. People don't understand that Prince's Island was named after a man, not some other uh, royalty or whatever. So, and I think it has to be clear that Mr. Kerr was the one that secured the lumber rights from the ghosts in the Kananaskis. And that should be uh, clear, more clear than what it was, well, I believe. Dwight. Dwight, can you can yeah. you can you write that up and send it to Jared and to me, and I will I will undertake to edit it into the document we we already have yeah. there, and, yeah, and then that's, we'll that's be able to sign it off. Yeah, yeah. that'll be perfectly yeah, okay. Dwight, I think it'll be easy to insert uh, Isaac Kerr, Sir. Uh, Sir yes, not Isaac, yes. Not Sir Isaac Kerr, but Isaac Kerr as president of the Eau Claire and Bow River Lumber Company. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that, that exactly. would be a significant thing. That's, that's all that has to be really said, and it's easy to do. Yeah. So. Okay, just just please send us a little note. Yep. Okay, so we go to the next one now, and this was the, uh, um, the it looks like a survey crew, but it says lunchtime at an Eau Claire Lumber Company site on the ghost. Is, is, are there, is, does that one pass muster? No, there's there's something wrong there. So that was a that was a caption that I received from Dwight, um, yeah. and it was referring to lunchtime in the Eau Claire and boat. Yeah, I, I took that, that from from information I received from Dwight. So maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, that's a totally different. That was a different picture than what they got labeled labeled in the stuff that uh, Kay has sent out to me because she had a. The survey crew from 1907 is the picture that was uh, surveying for dams on the river, eh? and that's totally different. Eh? Uh, I got the. I think we had it right in last month's package. Uh, if you refer to last month's package, I think the yeah the photo was it uh, and the, uh, correctly. Uh, so it's just the, it just got skipped. It got moved. Yeah, okay. and that that photo and the caption that I had written that was put in uh, this last issue of things was nothing to do with it. It had to do with that people don't realize that yes, there's a lot of people, skilled people that were needed uh, on there. And I wrote in the caption about uh, the sawmill people, uh, cooks, all that kind of stuff, then it's in sharpeners and that kind of stuff, that that was a different, uh, totally different thing. And the reason the picture, yeah, there was really no real mill per se for the Eau Claire that was in the ghost or the wipers, but there was logging camps and definitely a lot of men. And one of the reasons that uh, Henry Prince was hired because he had experience from the uh, uh, log movement on the river. Uh, you could write a whole calendar just on uh, that part of the, the their uh, occupation at all. Eh? And people have no idea. 
It's, uh, okay. it, for over 30 years, they floated them down the river. Okay, yeah, I, so let's, let's just get, reach a conclusion. Do we have to find another picture here, or do we have to correct the caption for this picture? Dennis, just the caption. Dennis, I see, I see now there's a discrepancy between the, yeah, the, the minutes from November, from, sorry, from August 9th, and, um, and what I had sent out in my email originally. So I have the right photo here for this caption that Dwight sent. And you're right, the photo, the photo has changed. So I will, I will, if Dwight, if you're okay with it, I'll just switch back to the original photo of As the actually, horses pulling the logs. Yes, and that's what I, I think too is uh, the other photo of that survey crew for dams is a really good one too if they wanted to use that, but use the caption that uh, that Glenbow's got on underneath their photo for it. It's self-explanatory, and like I said, it's a really good picture because it shows the old time. Uh, surveyors and their horses in their camp that they were doing. Uh, that's pretty amazing when you think about it, that in 1907, they were doing surveys already for the dams. And you got to remember, the bow has more dams on it than most rivers in North America. Here. And they were all started really early. So. I think Mr. Chairman. Yes, Eric. Um, I have the last meeting's documents in front of me, and, it, it, and perhaps you've already, Dwight's already identified it, uh, Dam Survey Camp near Cocker, 1907. I mean, that, that's, uh, maybe that's captioned enough for it. Right? And yes. then the, uh, the, the one on, again, the pages aren't numbered, but uh, there's a, sh a, a, sh a photo of uh, eight or ten uh, men walking into uh, the cook shack, I assume. Um, yeah. Is probably where that other caption should have been. That's the one I made the caption for. And exactly, that's right. Yeah, that's the yeah, one right there. there. Yeah. Okay, so are we concluding that if we have that photograph of the men walking into the cook shack with the caption that we have here, is that going to fix our problem? Yes, but I think with the other one with the survey crew is a, a, a valuable one too. And that one again needs no caption, just needs what's underneath the uh, the uh, documentation and uh, the the Glenbo uh, uh, picture. Well, it, Jared, maybe in the short term we'll put the uh, the caption on it. We'll keep it, and for the moment it'll be photograph number fourteen. And of course. If we have extras, they can be for next year. But if we run into a problem on the rest of the ones we're looking at this morning, then that's our backup. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Below that one, then, we have a Ghost River Suspension Bridge. Are we okay with that one? I think we're okay with it uh, as long as there's yeah. enough room for that lengthy uh, 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 a caption. But in my opinion, that's uh, one of the premier photos of the, the whole group we have. Absolutely. That's why we need a big caption. <laughs> so the caption should be fine as long as the room to print it, as long as the printer that's doesn't say, wait a minute, we've got the problem here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're all right on that one. So now we turn the page. And the next one is the... Uh, Two cars under the sluice, uh, under the sluice. And I got information for that one from, um, from Dean Cooper. And uh, this um, caption was based on a bunch of material that Dean gave. And Eric, you'll be pleased to know I did try and make it a lot shorter than what Dean gave me. <laughs> Our, are we are we sort of okay with that one? Fine with me. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on then to the North Sheep Road. That one um, is uh, seems as perilous as the car looks in that we don't have a caption for it yet. Now, does I agree with does somebody our want to Councilor Butters in that. I don't think we uh, actually need uh, captions for these. These are just 
wonderful photographs, uh, uh, but uh, it does describe uh, where the road is, uh, but uh, uh, that's fine with me. Okay. Is everybody happy with what Paul says? Yes. So yeah. Yeah, let, let's move on to the next one, Walking Buffalo. Uh, I see, uh, Jared, you edited this one, but went rather well too, because I could get long-winded when I'm doing my captions. Very long-winded. No. Fact, <laughs> anyhow, it's very good that uh, I, that I just good. actually yeah. uh, got sent a book on uh, Walking Buffalo that Brett McEwen had uh, 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 written years ago, and it's very good. Explains a lot more about the Manny. And under this uh, situation we're going with the Indians right now, they're natives, I should say, but uh, it's, it's very important that they understand that there was a native man that was well-educated that went all over the world uh, yeah. talking yeah. about Indian rights. And that, I think that's a very important thing. And I, I got a kick out of it last time. As seen his picture, people don't know who he is. He was in every Calgary stampede, and he was at the signing of Treaty Number no. 7 as a seven-year-old. So he's, his history is right. right. unbelievable. So was we well like done. this one. So let's, let, that's fine. Let's move to the next one, which, uh, which is uh, identical to the uh, Lookout site on Black Rock Mountain, and I didn't think I'd see one that didn't look as good as Black Rock, but this one sure doesn't. Yes. Um, and it's missing a caption. Um, be nice if there was a bit of a caption, and we have all the stuff from um, from Laura would enable us to write a short caption and say that these were built. It was a series of X number, I think six or something that was built in 1928-29. And I think that would be a useful piece of information to put in. Um, I can do that. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's say that's, that one is under control, so to speak. Um, just breaking a corner of the paper so I don't forget. I turned the page and I'm now looking at the tunnels uh, at the Barrier Lake, and that's got a decent caption on it. Uh, does anybody have an issue with that caption? Done. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I got that right off the internet. So. so. Uh, oh, well, if you got it from the internet, it must be correct. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay, we'll pass on from that one, and we look at Calvin's uh, Boys at the Roundup, uh, and that's got a uh, caption that I, I edited from material that I got from Eric, I believe. And uh, so, Eric, I'm looking mainly at you to say, are we okay with what we got here? I think what we have there is fine. We could spend two pages of elaborating on it, but we don't have to do that. I think what we've got is entirely adequate. Okay. Any any other comments on that one? Hearing Here's none, we'll go to the what I think is number thirteen, which is the uh, the car in front of that rather splendid looking house for its time, and that's. All material that came from Dean, by the way, and that I, I wrote that up based on that. And I asked him to explain it, and he gave me a long story about why it wasn't this, it wasn't that, it wasn't the other thing. So eventually, I, I thought, well, we better call it the mystery house, unless one of you can say, I know where that was. In fact, maybe one of you is living in it still. <laughs> You know, Mr. Chairman, perhaps this gives us an opportunity to engage with our uh, readership a little bit and say, uh, can anyone uh, give us any background on this house? And maybe something will come out of it. So, Dennis. Yeah, so maybe asking the question is a good idea, Eric. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll try and get something uh, to put in there, and I'll... I'll pass that on with Jerry. And so that this way, I think, I think we now have our, 
14 because there's one that's missing and the one that we had in yes Jared. um so in the original um glembo picture which i think if if i'm successful at contacting them and able to, and are able to purchase all of these photos um it it actually says that it was a federal and provincial forestry station at the entrance to Kananaskis for that photo. That, that was, I, I think we can eliminate the, the long paragraph about all the places it's not. We yes. don't need that. It's and and if that information, Jared, is, is something uh, so great, let's just go with it. And uh, if someone stumbles on it and says, wait a minute, that's not accurate. But it, 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 to me, it looks a little bit elaborate for a ranger station until you said federal. Uh, maybe the Fed <laughs> built better buildings than the province but, built. It, but it looks <laughs> a lot like the old, old jumping pound uh, station, and which I've been in and had running water in the basement because the spring was coming up through it. it was interesting but <laughs> i couldn't swear to it let's put it that way on a stack of bibles it was but it looks an awful lot like that building so and yeah it was fast year so eric who would you say where did that information come from that you just said before dwight uh jared said it oh so, yeah, that, so it was in, uh, some of the Glenbow stuff that we were, we had. Yeah. So okay. it's actually right on the photo that we received from Glenbow, the JPEG. That's and it right. Says it's a federal and provincial forestry station. But I didn't want to um, question our our information either. No, <laughs> as far as that? Concerned. Like we don't know. Well, where was it located, Jared? Does it does it say well, where it was located? It's so it says at the entrance to Kananaskis area. Well, let's go with it. We, we've got that information. It's on the last month's package I'm looking at now. Oh, you're absolutely right, Jared. It says Federal Provincial Forestry Station enters Kananaskis area, Alberta. Good enough. I, I think, think we should just yeah. put that in and go with it. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, um, I got on the internet. I have three computers going here and uh, um, went into Colonel Walker's sawmill in Kananaskis. And there is a picture of it, a far better picture, clearer picture on the internet than we have in our package. Uh, because it's on the internet, does that mean that, the, that it's uh, public? No? Still copyrighted. No. We st if we if we're going to publish it for, for for our purposes, I think we need to get the original from the source. Yes. Yeah. Well, given that Paul makes the point that it's a much better picture than the one we have, you this is photograph number fourteen. So I think we've got the thirteen, but I think we want to use this one. You know, the next time a calendar is done. Uh, it could be noted that there is a, a better picture on the internet and so in that future time we can go hunting for getting permission is that fair enough that uh, we, we it, so we don't lose it but we don't do the work on it now yeah no that, that, i think that's fair okay uh mr chairman right. sorry uh to keep interrupting uh here but uh i think the chances of uh, getting permission from a Glenbo between now and the time uh, we have to uh, get the information to the publisher uh, is practically nil uh, so I, I, we got to have a we got to have a plan B here somewhere and I don't know what that is uh, well plan B might be that we have to defer the whole calendar because most of this stuff comes from the Glenbo and so the point is, I just didn't want us to drop this when we were this close. And so if we get all this done, this homework done, we fix up the ones that we've discussed, this, and we put this package to one side, and then it's ready to go, assuming the Lenbo, I know they're going to be closed for something like maybe a year and a half, so we may not even be able to do it for two years. 
I'll probably be dead by then, but at least, uh, you know, we'll have this that little package will be able to go with it. That's so that, Paul, that's, that's the point really, because otherwise we're just leaving all the, all the bits lying on the floor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think it would be appropriate to, you know, to Jared has said he's going to try to keep at this and, and good uh, and, and wish, wish him all the luck in the world. But if he can't make it work, I think we're, we have no choice but to bail. Oh, I, I think all that's, I'm right where you are, Eric. I mean, he's going to make another try. And um, if that doesn't work, we're going to have to suspend it. And suspend is the right word because we're not going to, we're not canceling. We're just saying we can't do it right now. But Jared's yeah. going to make yeah. another attempt. Yes, and just so you know, I'm, I've made um, about four different attempts, and Joy's, Joy, who's now the planning assistant for the planning department, is also she's also sent some emails. So we're um, we are <laughs> we are at very active on this, trying to get it because it, it is an urgent matter that we need resolved if we're going to move forward with it this year. Um, but certainly okay. having the package available for next year would, would obviously that just streams streamline everything. Um, and then once we get the originals, we're able to go to print. I wonder, so Jared, if, uh, is there, maybe we need to find a def different way of approaching it. Maybe, you know, someone from another museum uh, 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 would have the home phone number of the right person, you know, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe we have to get a little bit more clandestine on this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, maybe I'll try contacting somebody from CHAPS, the Cochrane Historical Society. Um, yeah, or Canmore Museum, maybe. Or, yeah. Yeah. The problem is, is getting all of the photos. We each we need all fourteen of them. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, I would think that another have to another have source uh, uh, another source to call is uh, the the uh, uh, archives in Banff. Uh, uh, there, they got a huge library of photographs there. I wouldn't be surprised if they had all of them. Right. You uh, talking uh, about the White Museum? I am, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, no, that's a good idea, Paul. Okay. Well, uh, with that note from Eric and Paul, I think that gives you perhaps a, an amended direction, Jared, and trying to get somebody directly from uh, Glenbow is probably not going to work, but those other. Uh, institutions might have a contact that could work. Right. Okay. Jared, the last question. So, uh, um, uh, we, uh, um, several years ago, had uh, a consultant uh, um, uh, do an inventory with thumbnail uh, pictures of all of the uh, pictures he could find in the archives uh, that would relate to the MD, uh, are those not available or useful? Well, you remember the ones I'm talking about? I do. That's when we did. That's when we did the survey and we uh, identified uh, places or things that were of historical value, and the MD. Um, uh, declared some of them to be heritage items. So there were three categories we had. And that material is all still in the files. Um, yeah, that's all at the MD, Jared. I'm sure that was, somebody could uh, hunt that out. Maybe some of these are in there. Although, Paul, I think at the time they were, we didn't have necessarily permission to publish those photographs. We were just able to obtain them so that we could, they helped us with our identification process. Yeah, a good point, uh, Dennis. Uh, yeah, if we don't have, if we're stuck in the same rot, I guess, with, even with those, so. Yeah, I, th I think I that the, the idea of contacting other museums either um, either in Cochrane or in Banff, um, 
would would be uh, the best way to go. And you know, given that the time is so late as well, I think if we can't solve this in the next week or so, we're hooped anyway because we, uh, you know, with COVID and the delay of our meeting by a month, this meeting we're having today, uh, you know, we're we're right up against the deadline. And so we're going to probably have to uh, package it up and put it away for next year anyway. One last comment. Um, uh, I wonder if you could get on the uh, website and uh, uh, find the board of directors of the Glenbow and see if there's anybody there that you could contact uh, and, and uh, tell them that uh, we uh, really want to use our services, but are, are hooped by doing it. Well, Paul, I think that's an option, but I don't think that that's a, I, I think going to uh, the other museums and finding a working level contact is more effective because if we find a board member and go to there, then they, they all have to work through fellow board members and pass it all down. Like it's quite a, a circumvented thing. I mean, I know a couple of board members of the, uh, of the White Museum, but I wouldn't want to start with them because they would have to say, oh, tell me that again and make a clear idea of what we need. And then they have to give it to the staff in their museum. So I think that's, that's too uh, circuitous. Good point, okay. I'm fine with that. Um, if 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 the uh, committee is uh, okay with where we are now, let I think we should move to the next item, and that's uh, business arriving. Uh, item number two: site visits. I don't think that. That's going to take, I mean, you've already told us that last time, Jared. I think we all understand about things being delayed because of COVID. I don't, I don't know whether we even need to speak to that. No, I, but I if you wish to. Yeah, no, I just wanted it on the agenda just so that we addressed it. And that we're, you know, if there's any questions, Aware. any ongoing questions, then I give you an opportunity to ask those questions. Does anybody wish to ask Jared a question? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to item number three, um, which is the uh, research project with Firewood Consulting, Fireweed Consulting. Um, I went through all that, if, if I could just lead and, and sort of stimulate the conversation. Uh, Jared I, and, and members, I went through all of that material. Um, there were quite a few, um, well, let me call them anomalies, or a couple of typos, which are easy to fix, but there were some other things that made it hard to understand. I felt that what um, the material that, that has been circulated with the agenda was basically just lifted uh, by Laura from other sources, or at least it looked that way. Uh, and I didn't feel that I, I felt it needed one more uh, smoothing out before we should be uh, counting on saying that's uh, job done and finished. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I too have gone through the thing and, and, and I agree that there are, uh, there, there's a few um, uh, things that aren't exactly correct and it may well be that this stuff was found uh, and lifted. Uh, I hate to use the term lifted because it has a poor connotation, but uh, frankly, I think it's an amazing uh, uh, accumulation of stuff that was relevant to what we asked them to do. And I don't know whether it's our intention ultimately to sort of put all this together in print form or if it's just to have it uh, in the archives the way it is, but with, the, with a few uh, um, corrections, and I've got three or four here that I've noted, uh, and I'm sure others have as well. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, we're fortunate to have this detailed uh, uh, 
accumulation of exactly what it was we asked them to do. So basically, I'm very happy with it from from my point of view. But uh, you know, I'm not an expert in that field at all. But uh, it, it certainly uh, it, it certainly wows me. Yeah, I didn't mean to sound um, negative about the work. I think she's done a lot of work, and I think it's going to be very helpful, as you've described, uh, Eric. I just uh, I just felt that we were perhaps at the 95% stage, and we just had to have a, a brief little uh, review with her just to tidy up bits and pieces. That's really what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. Well... I, so as I indicated earlier, she is available for questions today, um, but I'm wondering if we want to um, sort of compile our questions, our comments uh, regarding her submission and get them sent off to her so she has an opportunity to respond or maybe edit the document um, according to our comments and questions. I don't know what the, the wishes of the committee are. Well, I just say this, having uh, been involved in this sort of thing uh, quite a few times before, Jared, is that it is it's much more difficult to describe than to talk to the author directly and just go through. I mean, we just go through it page by page, and at uh, some pages we'd have no comment. It looks wonderful. In fact, most pages would be like that, but the stuff that needs a little homework, it's much easier to describe it verbally than to write it up and send it off. Uh, I think if she came on today, uh, we could probably do it in, uh, you know, 15 minutes or so. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I agree with you, except page by page with this many pages that take a while the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I, I have some page numbers with some things, and I'm sure that you and others may as well, if we could just focus on those particular ones and rather than, uh, it, boy, it'd be a tough slog to go through this page by page. Well, uh, well, there's, uh, there's uh, certainly uh, two uh, of the five people that I'm watching uh, that have a, uh, uh, plethora of history of the area and I can't add to anything that Laura has done I think has done she's done a great job and uh, if if it needs to be tweaked uh, I think I, you could do it both ways uh, uh, one is uh, just uh, um, if Eric has in, uh, intimate knowledge for instance of a certain photograph like uh, Doug Richards or something and same as Dwight I think they could just uh, send that to uh, Jared and have it corrected uh, rather than uh, have a long conversation uh, with Laura. Uh, yeah, my, my opinion is too, there's, that I went, when I went through it and stuff, I'm quite happy with a lot of things. The only thing I found in there is the omission of some people that maybe should have been in for mills and stuff like that, that were 10 years uh, in the being and, and did a extremely lot a lot of work in our municipality, but a lot of those I when on thinking about it, she didn't have a, a history book or any a reference to parts of the northern part of our MD. You got to remember our MD split up all among all different areas, and the history books are like four or five different ones you could go into. And I do have the one history book that would tell about some of these people, and. Sure, it's a good reference, but then you've got to think about this too. How much in depth and how we always are going to be missing people and we're always not going to get all the story. But the general story is the important part anyhow. So yes, we should, maybe I should point that out to Laura and stuff like that, but it's hard to accumulate all this thing and the, gathering the information because of our split up of our MD is very, very difficult. So. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to. I, I'd be Later. happy to. Uh, I'd be happy to send uh, a, a brief email on to Jared uh, and just uh, identify. You know, there's a Morley spelt wrong in one place, and uh, uh, a couple of three other things that uh, could be cleaned up. And, and and Dwight's absolutely right. There's 
there's people in the northern end of this MD that uh, we haven't uh, uh, identified here, and, and you know, Dwight, you're probably the only guy that could bring them up. So uh, uh, <laughs> I will get well, something out to uh, just to have just be sent to Laura, and she, that way, if it's Jared getting hold of her, it's easier than one person coming from uh, and that would be the secret things. Just just a matter of sometimes of gathering information is not easy. I done it for many things. I've been been staying here in, in car stairs and I've had the same problem here because so some of our history is in their history books, some isn't, and it's like Mountain View. Uh, we, we, we just go through so many uh, municipalities along the foothills, it's just unreal. Eh? Well, so, well, let's uh, just agree. Can, can we just agree on this? As a, because we, we're, we're now trying to decide a process. And I think, uh, Eric um, and Dwight, if you can put some your notes together and send them to Laura, because these are additions that you're primarily addressing, uh, yes. apart from the spelling area in Morley. I, I have half a dozen other spelling areas too, but but I would personally I would like to talk to Laura, but not you see not to bring new information the way you would, Dwight, uh, and maybe others. Uh, because if we do that, I think that's an individual thing because it's new information. We don't all have to listen to it in its raw state. We want to get it to Laura and she can, she can um, uh, process it. But I think in terms of what's uh, currently in there now, that's, that's the part that we could have done as a group. But I'm, I'm quite happy to have a conversation with her separately. And I think, Jared, maybe the most effective way is that those of us who have information that we'd like to bring to the table on this, uh, we can each uh, have a call with her. And so we're not sort of uh, holding up our our full group as we make our points known. You okay with that? Yeah, I can certainly, I can certainly set up a call, Dennis, with you and Laura. Um, and then maybe the others, if they want to just send me comments, I can send those comments on to Laura, like put them all in. Either way. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. If, if that's your preference, I think she'd be open. To, I think I think she'd be open to that, because um, obviously this is a this is a first. Well, I don't want to say this is the first draft of the final document, but um, it's the first time we've seen the final document. So I think it's fair that we would have some comments yes. back. So. Oh, absolutely. That's the way history moves along. Okay, so is that agreed? Is everybody comfortable with that? That uh, Eric and, and Dwight, you'd uh, send a, a note to get Jared and uh, um, somewhere along the piece, I'll let that get to uh, Laura before I call her. So she'll have that at the time in case there's any overlap whatsoever and sort it out. And then I'll call her and, and have a chat with her because there's a couple of things in terms of the way the titles are set up on the pages, that it's not clear how it runs from one to another and a couple are out of order and things like that, you know, that, that are much easier to chat about quickly on the phone than to write up a whole message. Um, Eric and Dwight, if you are to send me comments, could I, just so that this doesn't go on and on and on, um, could I put a deadline of like this Friday or even yes. next Friday? Is that Absolutely. Possible? Yeah, absolutely, I can get it to you. Okay, so how about, are, Eric, are you okay with that? Yes, thank you, yeah. Okay, so how, how, about, I, how about we say by uh, this Friday, November 12th, um, you guys will have your comments to me and then and then I'll, I'll contact Laura and set up a call with Dennis. Yep, works for me. Okay, well, that's, that's great. Then um, those were the items under business arising. And uh, now um, we go, I just want to not miss anything here. Um, okay, I think we can go now to the uh, tracking form. Now, um, Rick, this will be the first time you've seen the tracking form. Uh, I've got a black line across the middle of my page. I don't know how to get rid of it, but so I can't see you smiling. <laughs> Let's see if you are. I, I, tried uh, to, I read it and I tried to understand it. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just uh, say that this was done uh, several years ago, um, Rick, and the whole idea of this was that um, we wanted to have a process which identified anything that we as a committee uh, felt should be done and then to prioritize it over time as to whether it was a short, medium or long term item so that we wouldn't lose it, but nor would we just drown ourselves by having everything in the short term. So that was the or origination of it. And we've had uh, a huge number of items on there over time and we've done a hell of a lot of them, which is uh, really good news. And some of them are underway or some of them, as it says, underway or ongoing, uh, and some uh, haven't been done. Um, but when we go through it now, we normally just look, because we've had this with us for quite a long time, and if you go through it in detail, it takes quite a while. So if, if, if this morning, if people have comments, uh, our practice over the last while has been to just look, obviously, at the red items because the red items are the ones that are, uh, as it says, underway ongoing there, and we don't spend time looking at the green ones. So I would uh, say I would like to go very quickly, page by page, and see if there's any comments. And if there's a comment, we can pause on it. If there isn't, we keep moving. And that way we know that we're all at the same place at the same time. So unless there's any uh, query about that as a process for our review, I would I would get it started, but I'll just give a moment to see if anybody has a problem with that. Okay. Uh, the first page is, you know, it's page 152 in our package, so I'll use that pagination thing. So page 152, are there any comments? Page 153, page 154, 155, there's nothing red, 156, there's nothing red, 57, 58, thank God we're good, 59, 60, <laughs> there's no reds. We got a red on page 161. Now we'll come to that, that oral history one, which is uh, I think a hugely important one, uh, but that is on our um, agenda under um, item I, our in-camera discussions. I'll, I'll just defer that for now, we'll come back to it. But the only thing I want to say before we leave this, I guess, is to uh, maybe report what I think I know, and if I don't, Jared will correct me, that we have at the moment one interview in abeyance, and I, I'll talk to it more when we go in camera. And um, in discussion with Jared, even though we have uh, we spent all our money for 2021, uh, we expect to be able to uh, pay for this one. We're this close to the year end. We'll be able to pay for it in our 19 or 2022 budget. And Jared is nodding vertically, so I take it that he's agreeable with that. Um, well, just just to clarify, we we could undertake it in 2021. Um, we will administratively have confirmed that we will find the funds to to undertake that interview, just Good. because it is. We understand it's an urgent matter. Yeah, that's right. That's the thing on these. Sometimes time passing is very relevant. Okay, page uh, 162, there are no reds. 63, 64, there is one at the bottom of page 164, uh, collecting archival material. Now, uh, uh, this might be a place where I could mention that um, I went to see uh, the Canmore Museum, and I, I think that note I wrote on that may have been circulated, but if it was, maybe not everybody, certainly Rick won't have uh, be aware of this, but I went to see the director of the Canmore Museum because in the past we have had some stuff that was actually MD history objects that were uh, resident in the Canmore Museum. 
and they feel very linked to us because our, you know, our border is one is on one side and one on the other side. So stuff goes back and forth. And at my meeting, uh, the director said that they, um, he and his team have a very ambitious uh, idea of getting a new facility for their museum. And um, listening to him, uh, of course, they have no money yet and so on and so forth. And I, I felt that he may not have that in place for several years. Uh, but in the discussion, he, I said, well, do you think you could arrange so that we have a room in there so that we could keep uh, objects that are important to the MD that at the moment we have no place to put? Because history, of course, is uh, sometimes most easily understood by looking at something that is old and with, a, with an explanation rather just being in, um, in um, written up, especially for younger people or uh, people who don't read so well. Uh, and he was quite amenable to that. And he went one step beyond and he said, supposing we had a room with MD stuff in and we could have it as a kind of a, almost a present, in other words, not just a storage room over time, maybe we could fix it up to be a, an MD history room that the um, HRC uh, from the MD would manage and control what was in there and what was said and so on and so forth, but that it would be located in the Canmore Museum. And I thought that was a hell of a good idea because of course we'd rather have it in the MD, but I'd rather have it in Canmore than have it nowhere and lose some of the uh, physical items that might come to us that we might want to have. So that's, um, it's a bit of a pipe dream at, at the moment. And of course, uh, all kinds of things can happen between now and then. But uh, uh, my thinking was initially, if we could find a piece of uh, a dry, uh, protected room to keep some stuff or to have it available so that when people from the MD say, I've got something that you guys should have. And at the moment, our, our reply has to be, we have no space. Uh, we've got that uh, wonderful um, measuring uh, instrument in the front hall, and we've got some pictures on the wall. But apart from that, we don't have a lot, and we have some books. So, but it, we're we're very limited, and this would re reduce, uh, well, it would remove for the time being any limitation we had, um, provided Eric doesn't send us an old. Uh, cow or something uh, which would be a little, a little too big um, so I wanted to tell you that and the other thing I wanted to make sure we knew um, is that the director of the museum um, for some reason has asked me to go to a meeting of um, some group he has and this may be to discuss his whole development plans further and he just thought well it's be good to have another rep sitting there. So I have agreed to go there and that meeting was uh, the first date he chose happened to be on my birthday. So I asked him, if I said, I can't go that day. And so uh, there's another date in early January, which I would intend to go. And I would of course report back to HRC as to what goes on in that meeting. And obviously I uh, not in a position to make uh, any commitments of any kind and nor would I be asked to. So it's just kind of a, I think it's kind of a think tank thing. And so that's uh, just to bring you up to date on Canmore. Uh, do anybody want to ask me any questions? Uh, I'll make a few comments uh, based on my experience. Uh, in the Stockman's Memorial Foundation, of which I was president for one year and uh, director for some time. Uh, and we were in, uh, housed in the Western Heritage Center. And as you know, that was a, a $15 million building. Uh, but uh, I found out through uh, uh, work with the Alberta government uh, that there is no museum in Alberta that makes money. They all lose money. They all run on subsidies. And uh, uh, 
as a counselor, I might have a concern that uh, that um, that if we uh, got involved with uh, planning of a library in uh, in Canmore, uh, certainly Canmore would like for us to pay for a portion of it. And uh, so, uh, and we don't have that uh, in any of our strategic plans. Uh, so that would be have to be included if that discussion goes too much further. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, the other piece yeah. is that uh, um, what, I found, what we found with the Stockmans is that uh, there there were so much archival pieces that uh, that uh, it wasn't too long before we ran out of storage uh, there too. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, I think we have to be careful what we ask for. Uh, Eric, uh, maybe you could uh, put some light on this. He's still the director. And I don't know if they still have a room downstairs that's full of saddles and wagon wheels and all kinds of things like that that uh, never see the light of day. Well, if I may, yes. Uh a couple of points. Firstly, Dennis, I, I don't think it hurts to be in dialogue with these folks and see what comes of it. I think that's a great idea. Uh, with respect to Paul's point about being swamped with archival material, the stock wins now, basically, if someone wants to donate some item to the stockmans, uh, it, it's in writing that the stockmans can do with it as it sees fit, and that might include selling it. So, uh, that way uh, people understand if they're going to give something over that it may be displayed, it may be stored, or it may be sold to help finance the, the organization. Thank you. Well, the, I, Eric, following on your comment, there's two things I know about most museums. And one is that um, they, virtually all of them have way more material in storage than they do have on display. That's just a standard situation across the world and sometimes they change things over when they have specific exhibits but they have more items in storage than on display the second thing is that uh, museums do tend to accept stuff that they have no intention of keeping and what they do is they trade it with other museums for things they want and you know there's a tax relief sort of thing if it has a value and it's only a one way then they could get they could museum A could make a donation to museum B who might get and if there's not a if there's not an exchange then they can get a tax receipt and things of that kind uh, or certainly to the donors so there is quite a a bit of um, um, stuff goes on outside the display part of the museum but Paul your your point uh, on um, on uh, potential costs it's a very good one but I think at this point it's just uh, this is very much at the exploratory state for one thing they're far from having approval to build their building and assumingly they if they got near getting approval they might come to us and say okay if you guys want a room we want you to pay for it or something like of that sort but i think that's a bridge we we cross when we when we approach it and we're nowhere near that stage yet well i agree with uh councillor butters and and uh it's it's a good idea to stay in the conversation. I think that that's great uh, that you uh, do that, uh, Dennis. Uh, and uh... okay, well, let's move on to page 165. There's nothing there. 166, bottom of the page. Develop creative tools to engage the community and local heritage. And of course, that is our. Are, um, you know, it says in there QR codes, interactive web maps, community competitions, and I mean that's an item that we can review in the future because at the moment our focus is on the calendar. But you know that's the kind of thing, Rick, that we don't want to lose sight of because comes a time if we get all our other homework done, well we can focus on something like that. Or if you're looking forward, we give you one of those things to do. Um, 
page 167 is clear. Uh, yeah, I'm partnered with the museum societies in 166. Well, we've just, or 68 rather, we've just chatted about that a bit. And um, of course, we, we aren't doing visits right now because we're still got the COVID limitations. So that's all, you know, we keep that on the list, but, and it's a lie, but we're not doing about anything about it right now. Uh, 6970, at the bottom of page 170, um, we say historic book listing collection, but if we have a book list already posted on the website, I'm not sure why, why that has a red uh, mark beside it, unless we want at some point to be uh, active in seeking and collecting books, and we're not, we're not going to talk about that today. Um, and Could I speak to that, just, uh, Mr. Chairman? I wonder if I could yeah. speak to that uh, uh, for the benefit of our, our uh, new committee member, uh, Rick. Uh, on the website is a bibliography of all of the books. Well, not all of them. As many books as, as my wife uh, could reference about the MD. Uh, and uh, it's there. There are some very interesting uh, uh, history books written. Uh, uh, for instance, in McDougal, uh, there's probably ten books written on McDougal's that on Morley. And uh, then there's uh, the whole town of Morleyville that was uh, a thousand people at one time was uh, was the hub of the uh, the area uh, and uh, many of the people that lived in uh, Morleyville moved on to Banff and uh, and settled in Banff uh, so there's an interesting history uh, uh, there's one book uh, I can't remember the name of it uh, but it, it's a book about uh, the first uh, people that uh, climbed uh, Mount Assiniboine and they were out of the MD and uh, they uh, they just kind of walked up it. No guides, nothing. <laughs> it's an interesting story. So it's just for your benefit. Uh, if you go on the website, you'll find that bibliography. It's a, it's a good point you make about a Cinnaboy because now you have to go to the hind hut and you have to hope the weather's good. So I can't believe some of the early uh, climbers who just kind of turned up and walked up the hill and there are some rock bands on it so it's uh, it, there's some places where you got to use your hands that's for sure um yeah. anyway page um so that's great paul that, that we have that and 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 hopefully we can improve that over time um and the photo page 172 we got a red item photographs of current events and we do that but we leave it there because any current event comes along we want to be reminded that we got to do that uh, or consider doing that. So that's the form, and and that unless anybody has another comment on it, that that covers that item. I'm now. Yes, Rick. You're 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 muted, Rick. <coughs> Pardon me. I was just uh, curious. Where do we keep the new material? I'm sorry. So the new material that you were just talking about, where is that housed? Uh, photographs of current events. Oh, photographs of current events. That is in the MD office somewhere, I believe. And uh, I think if you uh, talk to uh, Jared or somebody on his team, they can find that. that. That'd be really fun for you to, you know, spend half an hour going through that stuff. Yeah, yeah we have a, just an introduction, we have a digital folder with items like the Olympic torch relay um, and, you know, the, the 2013 flood. Um, so I do have access to that digitally. Um, I'm not sure if we have a physical manifestation of those digital photographs, but um, certainly they're on our network drive under under heritage resources. 
Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments on item E tracking form or can we move on to new business? Uh, I have something on my page here that I I hardly can read, but it just uh, I think it says members and uh, I don't know what I meant for that. So I don't I can't bring anything up on okay. that one. Anybody yeah, else have a new business okay. item they want to raise? That's mine. Uh, yeah, that's mine, Dennis. Uh, uh, apparently, we have uh, two uh, spaces open oh, for yes. public members, and uh, I talked to Jared about this, and uh, I I know of one person that's interested in joining the committee, uh, public member as a public member, and uh, uh, Jared, uh, I think, helped me. Uh, um, with the process, uh, I understand uh, the process is that we have to make a recommendation to council to add people to the committee. Is that correct? Um, yeah, my understanding of what the process would be because this because the HRC is a committee of council, um, it would be council who would um, would have to make you know make a decision on adding members to any committee now I, I think i would ask for direction on when that can occur i don't know if that can occur at any council meeting or whether or not it has to occur at an organization organizational meeting at, on an annual basis but i could certainly make that inquiry um, uh, Les leslie has something to offer we do thank you for letting me uh join um uh Paul, if you have, or if anybody out there um, has people that are interested in joining the committee, um, I would recommend that uh, they do fill out a boarding committee application form. It gets brought forward, and then I can bring that forward to council um, because of, then they can decide. Um, Heritage resources underneath its own bylaw, so it isn't a council committee, but. Um, uh, applications and stuff can come through and uh, be forwarded um, as recommendations to council. Thanks for that clarification, Leslie. Yeah. Thank you, Leslie. That's uh, that's that's great. Uh, makes it very clear on um, how we can do that. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a recommendation from this committee. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, Aaron. Uh, Great. I mean, Paul has someone that says there's nothing better than someone who has an interest. I mean, that's good news. Uh, but we don't, well, I, I don't think we currently have a member from the corridor area, unless, Dennis, you consider yourself a member from the corridor now. But uh, it would be nice if we uh, if we could find one. Uh, uh, in fact, in a private conversation I had with former Reeve Cooper, I I asked him if he would be interested in heritage committee and he said that he would not, but that he would be a phone call away and we could ask him uh, for help or information anytime we wanted. But so just a comment, it, would, it might be better. Uh, Paul has done great. And if we have a, a second one, it may be from the corridor. Well spoken. Any other comments? Paul, your young dog, bright as it is, is not allowed to be a member. <laughs> okay. Uh, correspondence, uh, to my knowledge, we have none. Uh, well, and as it says, educational informational items. Um, there are, in fact, uh, three, I guess, from perhaps our last meeting, and I just want to uh, comment briefly on that. Um, Paul, you sent me a, a really uh, fascinating uh, summary of some uh, items on uh, Jerry Potts, and I just want to mention to the committee uh, the interesting thing that when Jerry Potts was working for the um, Northwest Mounted Police, he was acting as an interpreter, but he was also 
uh, acting as an agent on behalf of the other side in those treaties uh, with the natives. And so he was he was a guy who held all the strings. And if some of the items in some of those treaties make no sense today, may, maybe Jerry Potts is the guy we should look at. And it's stunning that this guy, who was such an entrepreneur in many ways, and stayed alive. And of course, he wore a couple of six guns on his side, which in his time maybe helped him be a successful entrepreneur. Uh, he, uh, as your note says, allegedly he killed about 40 people who he didn't agree with. Uh, anyway, he, it's, it's amazing that the treaties that Jerry Potts, this wild man with a lot of skills, I mean, very bright guy, but he, he essentially was speaking for both halves of the treaties that have caused so much stress and are still operative in 2021. I mean, it's it's stunning. I would uh, I would like to see us do more about Jerry Potts. He's an absolutely beyond reality, amazing character. So I just wanted to wave a flag about Jerry well, Potts. I'd like to add a couple uh, of points to that too. It's interesting because uh, at the same time you guys are talking about Jerry Potts, I was interested. A whole bunch of people have talked to me about him, and you got to realize this is the same man in 1870 led the Blackfeet Indian in a war party on a massacre of the Crees and the Sitaboines. It was the last Indian war. He was, the, all the Indians basically were respected the RCMP, so there was very little conflict between the whites and the Indians. But that war going on with them was unbelievable. And like I said, he, he was on every side of everything, let's put it that way. So the, the, a lot of the books, books you read are very biased, uh, cleansed, let's put it that way. So he uh, was a lot more complicated man, and like you said, interesting. Uh, the best book I ever had on him, Jerry Potts, is written by a paladin of the plains, and it's a guy named uh, Faraday. Faraday was a uh, historian, still is, that's uh, from Newfoundland. And he came out here, and he wrote the most comprehensive <laughs> book you've ever seen on the man. Really good book. And uh, anyhow, reading it and going through it, it gives you a whole different output on the man. And like you say, he was one of the most interesting. I mean, the United States doesn't have a frontiersman anywhere near him. Let's put it that way. And, and so it's a real shame we haven't had movies. But that the book, book Jerry Potts, Paladin of the Plains, and it is an excellent thing. I will pass it on to Jared so it'd be, and you, well, guys, can, we can all get hold of a type thing. Right? Uh, I bought this in 1985, and that uh, Faraday, he's gone on, uh, historian, he's gone back to Newfoundland, but his perspective, because he was not a Westerner, he hasn't been biased by our thoughts, is really interesting. And that's why the BC government had hired him to do a bunch of historical stuff for quite a few years in BC, and that's how he got on to Jerry Potts, too because his influence was very immense. And you got to remember- Okay, well- So, anyhow- Dwight, get thank, yeah. thank you very much for that, Dwight. And I think Paul has taken note of that book because we've got to have that on the, our list, Paul, of the books uh, that at the MD that you spoke about uh, just before. And maybe it's already there, I don't know. Um, I did uh, do, uh, excuse me, Dennis, I did do some additional looking at uh, the Big Hill uh, history book, and uh, uh, and there are pots uh, in the Big Hill history, but from what I can gather, uh, they're, they're not related to uh, Jerry Potts. They're, they're not the same I, family. They're, they, they were immigrants from Scotland. Uh, so, oh, do you, mean, um, do you mean, Paul, somebody was stirring the pot? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, uh, uh, Dwight uh, made a good point. Very interesting character, and and that's why there's. Uh, I I uh, got on the uh, uh, Marigold Library system and and found out they had uh, six books uh, written specifically on Jerry Potts. So, and I ordered one just to read uh, so but they are available I, I should say it's through the Miracle system okay let's move on to item I in camera and um, 
May I have a motion to uh, go in camera? Thank you very much, Rick. And uh, so uh, can um, we now consider ourselves in camera? Somebody close the door. Oh, don't tell me, Jared, we have to close down and start again. Oh, please don't say that. <laughs> so I. Of a place that a, a space that we could borrow for a couple of hours uh, to do that interview. Uh, let me know or let Jared know. Otherwise, I'm sure we can find one, but we're, we want to get on with it. And so we're just looking for a space. And that's really the issue. And let's say that the space is, uh, is it'd be easier if it was east of the MD. So that's all I had to say. So look at that. We've saved going into starting all over again. <laughs> all right. So we may have a motion to move out of camera unless somebody else wants to bring up another <laughs> item. No names, no pack. I'll make that motion. Sure. I withdraw, I withdraw my okay. motion to go in. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Paul. Um, okay. So I think we're now at the point where we're setting the next meeting date and um we have a proposed date of february 7. um do so, we have uh, any feelings pro or con or jared do you want to speak to that yeah and leslie I, leslie has her hand up too well, leslie do you want to go ahead no i was just going to say i don't believe that was correct on the agenda um yes. the next meeting date should be or what is in the calendar is december 6 monday yeah, so I when I when I looked at that February date, um, I had missed the December 6th meeting. So that because we're about a month ahead of time right now, because we delayed this meeting until today, um, the next meeting would be November 6th and then the or sorry, January 6th, December 6th. And then the following meeting after that would be February. <laughs> OK. Um, with that clarification, uh, do we have some feedback from committee members as to whether those dates are uh, workable? Let me check. I have a question uh, whether we need that date, December the 6th meeting. Uh, I'm not sure we'll have any new new things to discuss. So uh, we've got the forestry report now and uh, the calendar will either have, have uh, gone out or or been uh, put in abeyance uh, by then. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure what there will be to discuss, uh, but I'm open to uh, going if, if that's what the committee wants. Uh, Paul, I think you make a good point. 
Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I, could I recommend that the um, we we keep in mind the December sixth date and await uh, uh, the call of the chair on that. Uh, Dennis could be in, in consult with Jared and decide if a meeting is necessary or not. Uh, How does the committee uh, feel uh, about that's that? An even better idea. That's a good idea. All right. Uh, seeing no objections to that, uh, I will consult with Jared over the next uh, uh, week or so, and um, and we will kind of sort that out. Yeah. I um, am I am away from the sort of the 18th to the 30th of November, so I'm going to my any input I have would have to be occur on uh, sort of you know before I leave on the 18th. Are you back on the sixth, Dennis? Yes, I'm. I would. I'm back on the thirtieth of November, so I could do the sixth. Yes. Okay. Should Should we see a need to do that meeting? So let's Let's say that we're parking. Uh, we're trying to protect the date of the sixth of December in case we need it. And uh, how about that future date? We may as well look ahead and see if anybody has. A known problem on the seventh of February. You're okay, Rick and Dwight. I'm good. Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. Paul and Eric. We're good. Well, I'm not having a calendar yet. <laughs> we got a slight problem. <laughs> In fact, if we don't get if we don't get this damn calendar out. We won't be able to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so uh, may I have a motion to adjourn then? Oh. Eric, thank you, Paul, others. Thanks very much. And Rick, uh, welcome to the committee. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, we know you've been absorbing today, but I know that that will reach an end and you'll be more active over time. So anyway, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, it, and Rick, it looks to me like you've got a piano behind you with some music on it. Would you, would you give us a little tune here, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> you oh. practice up for next meeting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good Take to talk to you all. All right. Bye. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Take care, guys.